uh, case three. Uh, uh, this patient, she is uh, uh, just starting her college. So when is the best time to do those cases? Is it when people are in, uh, finishing high school, going to college, they do it on the summer break or winter breaks. That's when most of the surgeries happen. And then uh, some people take uh, really like three, four months uh, off uh, to, uh, uh, to have this done. Uh, but planning takes time and sometimes uh, if a case is not ready uh, orthodontically or restoratively, sometimes we have to send patients for lengthening of crowns to get the better ovobite, uh, then we can proceed. I have a patient right now, she's scheduled for 24th of uh, December for surgery, but her crowns are short, so I can't get overbite, so we're struggling to get a, you know, the doctor to lengthen her uh, teeth uh, with the composites. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's a teamwork, it's a lot of teamwork. Uh, so let's look at the profile of this patient. Uh, this is the patient that slipped from perfect class one uh, uh, to open bite after two or three years of orthodontic treatment. Uh, so very good orthodontist in private practice who would uh, see the patient all the time, uh, TJ problem, splint, so I, me personally, I blame it on splints, you know. After orthodontic treatment, you should avoid any orthotics that separate the teeth. It can traumatize the weak joints of the teenagers uh, with uh, high susceptibility for estrogen levels, and it can resorb. It could be idiopathic, it could be uh, just traumatic, it could be overloading the joint, um, but that's probably what happened. It's my, it's my hypothesis for this patient, but the patient came, uh, she had perfect bite, you know, before, and then uh, she got um, this. Uh, uh, this is the uh, true set. So what, what does it mean, true set? It's extracted from the CT scan. It's not just uh, the regular set, but we got used to uh, when we shoot the set, we have uh, right and left side overlaying on each other. This is true set going through the midline uh, of the spine. Uh, this is her airway. And we can see uh, uh, her uh, nose is uh, fine. She has nice angle right there. I would say her upper upper lip has poor support. Uh, when uh, you know, how do we know where to move the uh, upper incisor? We do the mirror test. A regular dental mirror, put it underneath the upper lip and move the uh, lip forward, and then look at the nasal label angle right there. And you can uh, see how much movement you can tolerate. Same thing with the nasal base. We just put a mirror right underneath the nasal base and move it forward and uh, this patient could tolerate probably a centimeter of the movement with the upper incisor. We only did uh, six, uh, but she could do more and I'll show you why. This is her uh, CT scan after. So this is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. So what did we do? We moved the upper jaw forward, so her incisor came exactly five millimeters forward and one millimeter down. Uh, incisor actually, maybe five and a half or close to six. Then we uh, changed her, uh, we, we did the low advancement, this is the osteotomy gap right there, and we changed her occlusal plane about six degrees. We probably could do more, uh, uh, but um, for some reason I got uh, hesitant on doing that. And uh, with the chin lengthening to open this up right there. So you want to have a nice length from here to here to accommodate all the soft tissue. Because what did she have? She had a collapse right there. She, she had a uh, vertical chin right there. And uh, we want to have a nice profile. Uh, so that's how she looked uh, three days after surgery. Uh, so all incisions are throughout the mouth. And uh, some people swell like this, some people have no swelling, uh, 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 but for some reason she particularly swelled quite a bit. Uh, this is the only small incision that we make. It's a teeny little uh, incision with 11 blade uh, through the skin and we put a reference screw right in the bone here. And then all the measurements are taken from that and that's only extra oral incision. Yeah, you'll see how she healed nicely. So when you look here, you say, oh, uh, Dr. Antipov, you didn't move her low jaw enough. Look, she has a, you know, it, it just swelling. Her lips are just swollen tremendously. Uh, that's how she looks after the surgery. That's her frontal view. She has increased lower third. She has better nasal support. We did a lot of endonasal surgery by uh, trimming her inferior turbinates and lateralizing them so she can breathe better. Uh, she has 
uh, nice profile. So she has a, a very nice super tip break on the nose. She has same nice angle. She, her incisor is forward, that's why she has much better lip uh, augmentation right there. Uh, we didn't have to do any cheek. And then we increased that, and Pogonia moved approximately 21 millimeter forward, which is that front uh, point right there. It was right here before. Uh, smile view, we always wanna uh, give the patient a full smile. So uh, after surgery, they have to train to smile. Some people take a year before they can actually lift the lip up all the way uh, because of the incision and, and the muscle tension. So uh, remember I told you that she could tolerate another uh, four millimeters of advancement? Uh, and she could, you know, but I didn't want to overdo it. She probably looked like more like Angelina Jolie with the two big jaws. Uh, standing out, which uh, some people like, but um, also, you know, the more you move, then you have to see where your limits are, you know, but for her, it's a good, uh, uh, it's a big, big improvement, uh, but you see, when she smiles, her incisor is right there, here, ideally, if you drop the, ver and this is a, again, this is natural hand position, every time I make them balance the hand like this, so when we take that uh, photograph, it's always in the same, uh, it's not up, it's not down. Uh, so there's no simulation of the uh, movement. Uh, but her incisor is right underneath that canvas right there. Now her incisor is uh, probably in front of her eyelashes. If you look at uh, uh, Angelina Jolie, for example, then if she, when she smiles, her incisor is right here. So we could move th those jaws even more. But for her, it's again, uh, it's uh, absolutely good and uh, that's what she wanted. You know, so she don't want any more because we do that planning beforehand. We can pretty much, you know, very predictably tell the patient, this is the movement, you know, we could do more. You're gonna look a bit more protrusive and then we have to find the balance. Uh, the only thing I never promised them is uh, how the chin gonna look because I always decided on the table how long I can't tell any other time because that's hard to predict. Um, so her uh, walks by. Every patient gets a walks by and that's the record, continuous record with the pictures, ideally with the CT scan, uh, so the jaw stays where it is, it's not slipping anywhere, especially with the weak joints like uh, those people, uh, those, uh, those two females, very weak joints. Uh, her upper jaw got split into, two, into three uh, pieces, so it's, we we'll fork one, but it's three piece osteotomy. That means we have to widen it because it has to sit on the lower jaw and the lower jaw is wide, upper is narrow, so it's three piece lift fork. It's uh, very common now uh, that we do this. Um, so arch shape. Uh, this, it's easier to make this when the palate is deep. You know, when you have denture made and the palate is deep, it has better retention. So here, when we split the joint, widen it, it's better retentively when it's shallow. Imagine stretching that shallow uh, and hard palate, it's very hard. If you have a very high wall and we split it in three pieces, then it's easier to make it um, wider. So this is for bite after. Uh, these are belts and suspenders, I call them. Those are TEDs, temporary anchorage devices. Uh, and we have elastics, vertical, uh, four ounces on each side. And this case could be easily, you know, you know uh, 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 in, in your in your office and you would do Invisalign and that patient would relapse. So you have to have good friends, uh, you know, orthodontist and uh, make sure they take care of the case after. But uh, this is how we plan uh, the, uh, the, uh, the case. So th this is acrylic. So the jaw got split, but it won't continue wire for stability. So we put this acrylic uh, on, on top of it. Uh, Orthodontic colleagues don't like it because they have to change the wire and take the braces off and change that, but it's kind of necessary for those cases, especially we don't want any splints for those patients. The best splint is the big, tall cusp that locks the occlusion. So for those patients, I build the cusps on the molars, I call them mega cusps. They look like vampire, but they really lock that occlusion. That's the best retention for big transfers um, uh, movements of the uh, upper jaw. So this patient, uh, 
the planning, okay? So you, you can see those little, uh, uh, those little um, dots right there. It's, uh, it's called sure mark. It's a, uh, it's a mark that we put on certain points uh, and then when we scan the patient, I can re re reorient uh, the uh, face and the skeleton uh, exactly to the pictures that we took because I know the natural head position. So everything, the planning has to be in the natural head position. I will keep repeating that. Uh, you can see the laser points right, right there, laser dots. So we have to find uh, the uh, position of the head, and our, and it's very arbitrary. It uh, cannot be front or horizontal plane, and cannot be anything. Uh, you cannot define it. You have to select it, and you have to stick with that. So before we used to uh, say, well, it's front or horizontal plane minus so plus uh, seven degrees, and uh, you, you can't do that. Uh, you, you just have to assign the for each patient, you have to assign the um, um, the plane uh, of the hand, and then you stay with that. Um, again, this is before and after uh, bite. So to maintain this bite, class two elastics, uh, no chew diet for at least two to four months, uh, Botox in the um, in the masseter and temporalis, uh, skeletal, uh, skeletal uh, unloading uh, using TED. So we want to put. Um, uh, we want to put elastics uh, uh, in the front to maintain that overjet and overbite. Uh, and uh, Team J medications that we talked about. Okay, so sometimes uh, this picture shows uh, how I plan those cases. Sometimes I tell them, uh, stick your jaw uh, uh, forward and then I look at the facial balance, how, uh, how that looks. Uh, those are marks right there that represent the laser point. This, this, and this and then I put those markers there. Again, before and after, before and after. So patient had upper jaw forward, lower jaw forward, chin forward and down, counterclockwise face rotation, airway, and bite correction.